Father, we do come before you, and I thank you. Lord, I ask right now, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my God. Lord, let me speak forth your heart in your words. Lord, let me lay, let us all just lay aside um, our own agenda, our own preconceived ideas, Lord God. And Lord, let us just be open to have our hearts renewed and our mind transformed um, into your image. And Lord God, not just into your image, but Lord God, let us live our lives so that when we walk in a place, people don't really see us, but they see you. They sense your love, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. You know, and that's, that's a prayer of mine. It has been for years that, you know, it's not about whether or not I'm seen. It's I want to make sure every place I go, I want to. I want Jesus to be seen. I want his love. I, I know that the Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus. So that's, that's my heart. And um, in that, I have to do a few things. I can't make things about my own agenda. So I have to catch myself on pretty much a continual basis in my life that it is not about me. Amen? That it is all about God and those things. Well, you know, one of the things that the Lord, I felt the Lord really want to share this morning is that we really need to be, stay focused and busy about doing the Father's business. Amen? Um, sometimes we can have a habit of getting caught up in other people's business. You know, not saying, you know, oh, I just care, I just care. Well, here's the thing. If you're so caught up in somebody else's business, that is, it is affecting everything else in your life, you're too caught up in their business, all right? You get caught up in God's business, not in everybody else's business, all right? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, and this is in the uh, New King James. 1 Thessalonians 4, 11, I think, yeah, 11 and 12. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. Everybody say, I'm learning to mind my own business. <laughs> and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. So, you know, understand that uh, can we change anybody? Who changes people? Only God, all right? Do you realize I, I live with this man, and I can't even change him? Can you believe it? <laughs> I would have liked to. I don't know. <laughs> there have been times that I have tried, and it has not been pretty. I can tell you that. <laughs> and it seems like the more we try, we try to change somebody, um, the more the opposite direction that they go. And I believe that that's, I believe that's God. Because when we're trying to do it, we can get into control and manipulation. And that's a very dangerous place to be. So we never want to do that. Husbands, you don't want to do that with your wives. Wives, don't do that with your husbands. You know, if there's areas of our lives that need change, and, and trust me, I'm not saying that there are not things that we, we point out to each other. It's like, hey something different there or, or that type of thing but here's the thing if I'm convicted by it or if I feel that it needs to change and I share it with him and he does not agree with me and it's not something that's harming me or hurtful or I I physically you know I can go to God and I can talk to God about it and if he's supposed to change guess who's going to get him because I've seen it so many times I can remember it got to a point where, you know, I'd share something with him, and he'd be like, nah, no. And I'm like, okay. You know, it, it took him back because I wasn't going to prove my point. I wasn't going to dig my heels in and say, no, you need to listen to me and, you know, all that stuff. I was just like, okay. He goes, what do you mean okay? And I'm just like, well, you know what? I, I, I believe that that was God's heart. 
you know, it's speaking to me. So if it was, then I'm just going to trust him. He'll reveal it to you. I don't have to reveal it to you. I just release it. And he was just like, yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> because, you know, some, some areas we don't necessarily want to come into agreement. We, won't, we don't want to be challenged to change. And, um, but every time, you know, I did that, it just, it was God. And when God changes us, it just, he does it in, in a way that is, it's easy. It's, it's not hard, okay? So, you know, I'm sharing that because we've been talking about, you know, some, some mainly women in the Bible, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to hit a few other people too. But, you know, you've got Hannah who is in a situation where she can't get out of, all right? And she has no children, all right? I'll just recap real quickly. She has no children. His, um, her husband has two wives. That's a big mistake, so don't do that, okay? I, it's one, one wife, okay, one husband, guys, all right? Uh, but anyway, at that time, he had, he had two, and the one had children and would torment her because she didn't have children. And this went on for years and years and years. And her focus was on what she didn't have constantly. And it caused her great sorrow. It caused her great sadness. And that's what will happen if we're always looking at what we don't have. If we're always looking at what somebody else has and we want. All right? But we know with Hannah, there came a time where she went before the high priest. He accused her, falsely accused her of being drunk. She wasn't. She, you know, that, that's not me, Lord. And it, but he said, the Lord grant you. And here's how we know she received the word. And she, because faith is an action word. She received the word and she, it says she went away, she ate, and she was sad no longer. Did her situation change? Because she didn't have a baby the next week or even the next month. All right? But her countenance changed. She chose to focus on the things of God, all right? So you understand, if I'm preoccupied with what somebody else is doing, what somebody else has, or what they're going through, um, I, it, it makes it more difficult for me to listen to what God is saying. It's, it's harder for me to listen to what the Father wants me to listen to because I get caught up um, in, in, you know, their turmoil sometimes, or I get caught up in their life. And how many of you know the saying, it, the grass is always greener on the other side? And it seems like when you get there, all of a sudden, the grass is the same. And what happens? All right? So understand, wherever the Lord has us, it's not that we don't believe God for greater things, but wherever the Lord has us, we are to be diligent in that area. And we're to, to do everything is unto the Lord. Okay? And I can remember, in, in we just keep in contact with some people who were here years ago. And the one uh, had just texted Pastor Scott. And he remembered a word, okay, that I had spoken over him years and years ago. And the, the word was... I saw him in um, surgical scrubs. Now, he could have taken that word, and he could have immediately thought, okay, I have to go to medical school, I have to do this. And I said, I'm not necessarily saying that it's, it's, it's a medical field, but I just see you in medical scrubs. I think there's that you're going to be involved with something. So don't go out and make it happen. Trust God. And um, he was that word was brought back to him because now he is actually he has um, started a company and they are helping people get free of drugs and he is a part of that now and it's it's a, a certain medication and things like that and it's something that he technically would have never been qualified for but God I mean, God gave him the wisdom and opened the doors, and now he's seen the kingdom of God manifesting through that. He sees this as his ministry. It's something that the Lord gave him. So understand, it's not just ministry when 
you stand up and you, you preach the word or you're sharing the word, ministry happens every moment of your life in whatever you're doing. If you'll do it unto the Lord, okay? So it's very important to see that and, and to stay focused on what God is telling you to do. I rabbit trailed there just a little bit. Because, uh, you know, I want to get back to, you know, not getting so caught up in other people and staying focused in what God wants to do in your life. Because if we get caught up with other people, um, what happens is we start seeing their faults. And then we start thinking we have to change them. And then we stop being thankful and we stop being grateful. And one of the key things to releasing the presence and the love of God is to have a thankful, grateful heart. So the key is, in any relationship, in any marriage, in any job, if you want to make the best of it, if you want to enjoy it, start blessing it. Start being thankful. Why on earth would you curse something that you're a part of? Why would you complain about something that you're a part of? I, I, you know, I could not believe some of the things that people would speak in the workplace. I'm like, this is the place that you are getting your paycheck from. Now understand, that is not your source. God is our source, but it is a means that he is using to bless you. Why would you curse it? It just it boggles my mind. So we can't get caught up in those things, even when other people are doing it. All right, so we cannot think and we cannot act. got to choose to respond to the Holy Spirit, all right? Matthew 6, starting with verse 22 in the New King James Version, it says, the lamp, all right, the lamp of the body is the eye. That lamp is a portable lamp, okay, or an illuminator. So what is illuminating our decisions in our lives? Is it the world and the influence of it, or is it Jesus and the influence of him? Very important. The lamp of the body is the eye. The eye there is the mind or the faculty of knowing. All right? So understand when we're breaking this scripture down right now, what is illuminating our how we think, what's going on with us. If therefore your eye is good, that word good means single or whole. If your eye is single or whole, I'm breaking it down from, from the Greek, okay? We're getting some, some extra meanings out of it, so you don't see that part up there. That's why I'm adding to it. Your whole body will be full of light. So if your focus if your eye is single, not double, okay? Not, okay, well, this, and, well, sometimes I believe this, and sometimes I believe that, and, yeah, I believe God in this, but, no, I don't believe God in that. Well, understand, that's going to make life a little challenging. And that's why God is about making us whole. He's making us single so we can be focused on him. So if your eye is single or whole, your whole body will be full of light. And that, that word light there means the power of understanding, especially moral or spiritual truth. So if we want to understand God's ways, it's where we stay focused. We have to stay focused on him. And then verse 23, and this, this kind of really got me, but if your eye, understand that's your, your understanding, your faculty of knowing. If your faculty of knowing is bad, that word bad there means evil, wicked, malicious, or slothful. And because I'm reading and I'm like, oh, no, I, I'm not evil. I'm not wicked. I don't think I'm malicious. I'm like slothful. Ooh, sometimes I can be a little bit. You know, where you just kind of get lackadaisical and you, you, that type of thing. So I'm like, ooh, okay, Lord, I don't want to be slack where it comes to the word of God. I don't want to be slack 
where it comes um, to the area of living for Jesus and, and being his light to illuminate and let his light and his wisdom illuminate my thinking. All right. So if your eye or your faculty of knowing be evil, wicked, malicious, or slothful, your whole body will be full of darkness. All right. And that word darkness there, it, it means almost like a, an ignorance. An ignorance of, of not really respecting divine things, the things of God, taking for granted, um, or human duties, all right, um, immorality and, and those types of things. So we don't want to get to a place where we let influences into our lives that's going to make us begin to question the things of God, the ways of God, the precepts of God, all right? If therefore the light, okay, and that, that word there, light, means a light source, all right? So if your source, where you're getting your source from, that is in you is darkness. So if you make your source for getting things, the attitudes of the world, what other people are saying, that type of thing, and you're putting more of an emphasis on that than you are on the light. Jesus is the light. If you're doing that, how great is that darkness? So understanding that we don't want the light that's in us to be darkness. That scripture used to always get me. I'm like, mm, the light in me is the darkness. But when you break it down and you look, where am I going to for my source? Where am I going to to seek and to inquire of? Am I going to God or am I going to the, the, the things of the world? And, you know, I was listening this week and somebody had said, uh, I guess there was, and, and I didn't look this up to see how true it was, but I'll, I'll just share it and you all can check it and correct me if I'm wrong. We'll put it that way. But what they were saying is, I guess there was a survey that they put out in some of the college campuses. And the survey was, do you believe that God understands radar? And an astounding number of college students said no. I mean, think about that. Didn't he create the bat? Isn't that kind of where we got radar from? To, to think that we have anything or created anything that God does not understand is a scary, scary place, personally to me. So we want to make sure that our source is always God in his ways. It may sound good. Other people's business may look great. I mean, it's working for them. They never have any problems. Yeah, go live in the house for a little bit. I'm just saying how it is, all right? Because we all have opportunities to press through to things, okay? So it's not about what other people are doing. It's about what God is telling us to do and making sure he is our source, all right? And we're not looking at what somebody else has or what somebody else is doing or what's going on in their life whether it's good or even turmoil. Don't let, don't get sucked into the turmoil. If they're having difficulty, if God gives you a word, if God gives you something to do, you do it. But it's not our job to fix people. Because I have been corrected more than a few times by the Lord in the area of wanting something more than the person wants it. And you just assume that, I mean, this is a no-brainer. This is good. And then you end up doing it for them, and they don't want it. And as soon as you step away, they're mad at you because you didn't do enough. It's just like, what? What on earth happened there? Well, you know what? I got, I got caught up. I caught, got caught up in human, okay, emotion. And I didn't really hear the heart of God in that situation. So let's go to James, and this is going to be in the Amplified. James chapter 1, 
and starting with verse 5. If any of you is deficient in wisdom, let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly, without reproaching or fault finding, and it will be given to him. I thought that was pretty good right there. Without reproach or fault finding. I'm telling you, when we start fault finding, when we start complaining and murmuring, the Word of God tells us all that happens is destruction. We start destroying things. And I understand frustrating things happen. Pastor and I, sometimes we have to catch ourselves when, when frust something frustrating happens that we don't start complaining about the situation because it's not going to help the situation. It's, okay, God, what's your plan here? This may have taken us by surprise, but it did not take you by, su by surprise. What are we going to do about this? And then hear his heart for it. Amen? Oh, okay. oh, we can trust Jesus, can't we? Every time. Verse 6. Only it must be in faith that he asked with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. Must be in faith. We've been talking. Faith is an action word. Faith believes God. Faith believes that God is bigger than the problem is. We're not moved by the problem. We're moved by our God every time. Okay? So, no hesitating, no doubting. For one who wavers, hesitates, or doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. Verse 7. For truly let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks from the Lord. So why is it important to stay single? Why is it uh, important to keep our focus and let the, the Word of God illuminate our decisions? Because if we're not, we're going to become double-minded. And when we go to God and we ask God for things, then we're going to be like, God, why aren't you coming through for me? Can I tell you, that is one of the most prideful statements. I have ever heard in my life. God, do you know who you're talking to? God never fails you or lets you down. All right? Sometimes we need to look in the mirror and say, okay, God, obviously I'm not getting something right. What is it? Change me. Help me to, you know, what situation needs to be changed? And then, you know, trust God in his anointing. I love what Pastor Scott shared about the horn you know, being exalted. And in the Word of God in the Old Testament, the horn was speaking of the anointed one, the anointing. Let his anointing be exalted. Lift him up. Trust his anointing to change situations that we cannot. All right, so where, where was I? Okay, ask from the Lord. Verse 8. For being as he is a man of two minds, some versions say double-minded, okay? A man of two minds, hesitating, dubious, irresolute. He is unstable and unreliable and uncertain about everything he thinks, feels, and decides. So you may think, oh, no, it's okay to, to be on the fence. It's okay to have one foot in the world, and, you know. N no, it's not. And, and so many, I hear some young people say, you know, it's just not realistic. God's not realistic. You don't think your God can make you succeed his way in this world if you will trust him doing it his way. Just make sure you're, you're, you're not double-minded. Otherwise, you're going to get confused. Okay? So it's very important. So being double-minded, it means to hesitate, be indecisive. It's a person who has not thoroughly, thoroughly resolved things in their mind and settled them once and for all. And I believe that we're, we're still in this process. I know I am when it comes to the Word of God. Because there are things in the Word, and, and no, I shared last week, you know, when the Lord started challenging us to, um, and, and I'm not saying 
debt is wrong, but when God spoke to us about getting out of debt um, with the church and, and our homes and things, which we're still in the process of, of our personal things, but um, for the church, and he spoke, oh, oh, no man, anything but to love. So at that point, I mean, we had to get single-minded on it. We had to begin to, to stop hesitating, stop questioning, how is this going to happen? How are we going to do this? And realize, well, there's no way that we can do it, but God, if you're speaking it, we just need to take steps forward in obedience to you, and you're going to make it happen. And, and we saw, we saw it. So we had to get things resolved in our minds in that area. We had to focus on and really get the scriptures that God is our provider, that in him there is no lack, there is no want. So that when things, situations came up that looked like it was the exact opposite of what he spoke, we weren't moved by that report. But we were, we were moved on, okay, God, well, uh, you are our provider. So, you know, we're trying to get this taken care of and paid off, and now all this is coming. Lord, you'll, you'll make the way. And we stayed focused on trusting him. See, that's what God wants. So what happens when we hesitate? All right, when we hesitate, when we get double-minded, when we're uncertain, you know, well, yeah, I know the word of God says that, but. No, get God's heart for it. All right? Say, God, I know that's what your word says. I just don't know how to reconcile it to live it out. So, Holy Spirit, help me. Is the Holy Spirit here to help? And, and you, you might have in your mind, oh, I have to do this and this and this. And the Holy Spirit will say, I never told you to do that. No, you need to do this. And it's like, oh, that's, oh, that's not bad, Lord. I can, I can do that. And then he'll have you do this step. But it's being obedient step by step with what God is saying. So what happens when we hesitate? Number one, our adversary gets the upper hand. All right? He's not God's adversary. Let's make this straight. God and the devil are not fighting anymore. When Jesus said it is finished, he defeated hell, death, and the grave. He destroyed the works of the enemy. So understand, we are now facing a defeated foe that is trying to convince us that he is not. And he uses manipulation, lies, and all kinds of crazy things. So we don't want to hesitate. We don't want to be double-minded. We don't want to be constantly um, going to the world's ways and going to God's ways. We want to stay focused on God's ways. All right? And in those ways that we're, we're like, I don't know how that's going to work, God. Trust Holy Spirit. When you seek him with all your heart, he'll reveal. He will. He wants a relationship with us. See, we just want quick answers. But God wants a relationship, and he wants us to walk it out and, and grow. Number two, you, we'll find ourselves always on the defensive. Okay? always having to defend ourselves, always having to try to explain things. But when you know you've got the heart of God and the word of God, you don't, you don't always have to be defending yourself. All right? Number three, find yourself always wondering what you're supposed to do. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what to do in this situation. Well, whenever you choose God's ways, it's, it's an easy thing. Okay, it's not always easy. It doesn't have to be hard, okay? Because sometimes when God tells us to do something, it's like, because it, I can remember one time um, I had a, a situation, and this individual was pretty malicious, okay? It was, did did not, some not nice things, okay? Let's just put it that way. And, and actually, really could have gotten me in a lot of trouble in the place I was working, you know, potentially fired for it. And, um, I mean, I was miffed. I was so angry. And this person, you know, was a Christian, 
you know, and you said they were a Christian. Everybody say, just because we're all Christians doesn't mean we don't get goofy. Okay, sometimes. So anyway, uh, I was just like, oh, my word. And then I tried to say, you know, what you did was, it was just like wrong. And they're like, no, it wasn't. I don't care. I'm like, wow, God, okay, <laughs> that went well. And uh, so I just stepped back, and, and I was just, I was steamed. And the Lord's like, you know, you need to let that go. And I'm like, okay, in a little bit, Lord. <laughs> can, I just, can, can I just tell them a few more things? And he says, no, you just need to let that go. So I, I went before the Lord. I'm like, okay, Lord, I choose to release them to you. I trust you. Lord, you deal with their heart, and you're going to deal with this situation. So I released it completely. And um, then, okay, do you want to know what God told me to do? God said, okay, send her flowers. I mean, not in an audible voice. It just kind of rose in me. I knew it was God because I was just like, are you kidding me, Lord? <laughs> and, and yeah, you always know it's God whenever you're like, dang, really, Lord? <laughs> and um, so I know he's just like, I want you, I want you to send, send her flowers. okay, God, I'm going to do that. And um, so anyway, I, I sent her flowers, and um, I, I wasn't even really thanked for them. That's not what it was about. So don't make it about when God tells you to do something, you get the right response. Make it about, I, I obeyed God. All right? So I obeyed God. Um, didn't even get a thank you or anything like that that I would have liked personally. But, I, you know, I released it. And can I tell you, there was absolutely no problem with what she had stirred up. As a matter of fact, I ended up getting favor and getting promoted. Now, understand, if I would not have done that, I don't believe that would have happened. But see, I opened the door by being obedient, doing it God's way, and then God had his way. It's so key. It's so important. I've seen it. I've seen it too many times. It didn't make sense in my mind. I didn't want to do that, but I, I just, I trusted the heart of God, okay? So, understand one thing, that our situation, our symptoms, our whatever it might be, may point in the wrong direction, okay? May point to death. Our symptoms might point to death. Our situation might look bleak, like there's no hope for it. But God's word always points to life, all right? So it's why it's so important that we get God's heart, that we get God's word for the situation. And we cannot look at a bad report and a good report at the same time. They're in opposite directions. It's like when the 12 spies went in to the promised land. God already gave the word. I'm giving the land to you. It didn't mean they didn't have to do anything. But he already spoke the word. I'm giving the land to you. It's not about what you can do. It's about what I want to do through you. So understand, when God speaks a word, it's not about you just manning up or womaning up, you know, to get it done. It's about, okay, God, you spoke the word. I just need to focus on you. I just need to trust you, Lord, and do what you tell me to do and be obedient. So we know that they went in and they came back and 10 came back. It's, they call it not just a bad report. They call it an evil report. Why? Because they, they didn't believe God. The light that was in them was darkness. All right? Because what was going on in their mind, in, in their thinking, was they were looking at the situation. And you can't look at, at an evil report and a good report at the same time. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum. So we're learning to take our thoughts captive and every single moment take authority over what we're thinking. You can't control what you think. I'm, I'm telling you, do not believe the world that you can't. All right? Because our mind is our, it's with our, our soul. I understand we have a brain. There's things we need to do to help keep our brain healthy, okay? But 
Our mind is renewed in Christ Jesus, but we have a responsibility to keep it renewed in Christ Jesus. And we keep it renewed in Christ Jesus through his word and through believing his word over everything else. It's, it's our choice, all right? And our choice. We can believe lies of the enemy. We can believe the ways of the world. We can even uh, take facts at face value and end up being imprisoned, sick, sorrow, full of sorrow, lack. Or we can dig into the word of God. We can build our faith and we can take a stand on truth and not be double-minded anymore. Not be looking, you know, constantly. You know, we think we're just like, well, which should I pick? No, it's pretty much, which should I pick? Okay? And God is wanting his truth to just flow. Do you believe your God is more than able to have you overcome in every situation? Then it's key that we choose God's ways. It's key. And the only way we're going to know God's ways is through his word. It's his heart. This word, okay, understand, this word is living and active. It's powerful. But it becomes living and active as we act on it, as we do it. We're doers of the word and not hearers only. All right? This is just pages in ink. It's when we take it into our heart and let it renew and transform us and we start living it is whenever God is glorified. And that's, I know that's what I want and I know that's what you want. And I believe this is just uh, an area that God wants to expose uh, so that we can be whole and not divided in areas of our lives. And again, I, I think this is, you know, we have certain areas of our life that we're very, we're very single-minded. We're very focused. We know God will move. Like, for example, like, you can't convince me that God um, can't restore marriages. You can't do it. Because I, I saw what he did with our marriage that, that looked hopeless. But understand I had to choose to do it God's way. I couldn't change him. He couldn't change me. We really had to invite God and let God do a transformation and a work in our lives. Okay? You can't convince me. But then there were other areas that, I mean, something would happen, and I would be like, you know, all over the charts with it. And in that area, God wanted me to get whole in, single-minded. Right? So it's a process of growing. Like you might be very strong in the area with finances, and somebody else might be all over the charts with that, you know, needing to be single-minded. You, you might be strong in the area of relationships, and somebody else is like, whoo, they are listening way too much to the, the, the ways of the world and walking in a whole lot of sorrow because of it, you know. So understand, it's letting the Holy Spirit come in and make us whole and, and get us single-minded, single-focused in the areas that he's working. And, and here's, the, here's the fun thing. I believe as long as we're on this earth, there will be areas that he'll be working on in our lives. Because he's, he is beyond our comprehension. He is so miraculous and in full of splendor beyond our comprehension. So why wouldn't we want to keep growing in him and being renewed and changed? Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Holy Spirit, we come before you and we ask, well, we thank you first and foremost that you said in your word that you would lead and guide us and teach us in all truth. So Holy Spirit, we invite you. We invite you into every area of our lives. Lord, even those um, closets full of junk that we kind of cram everything in and, and close the door and hide them away, Lord, we, we open that up to you to just come in and begin to illuminate, Father God.
begin to let us be, let you be the source of light in our lives, revealing your heart. And Holy Spirit, I thank you. You're helping us to bring our thoughts captive to the obedience of you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you that, Lord God, we're walking out this walk. Lord, bring the glory to your name so that people can see you, Lord, and be drawn to you through us. Lord, I thank you. We are your light, and we are the salt of this earth. And Lord, we're honored and we're privileged to be a part of your plan. So we surrender In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. God bless you. Go have fun on the roads and drive careful and have fun in the snow. We love you all.